Now, let's begin panel discussion two, digitalization in trade and in customs. Uh, please start your presentation after we call upon your name. Same as the uh, panel discussion one for the smooth proceeding of the panel discussion, please make sure that you keep to your time. In this session, we will be hearing from the experts from the Azerbaijan and also Turkmenistan about their digitalization activities and followed by the uh, Nippon Telegraph and Telephone West Corporation um, share their demonstration uh, initiatives and also World Custom Organization will be discussing about the digitalization in this region. And the last speaker is from the NX Logistic Research Institute on Consulting about the digitalization. So first of all, from Azerbaijan, the, uh, uh, the head of the Transport Policy Department, Ministry of Digital Development and then Transport, Mr. Aliyev, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Ichiba. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, first of all, on behalf of the Republic of Azerbaijan, I'd like to extend our sincere greetings and uh, express our gratitude for the organization of uh, such an important event and inviting all of us to participate in this dialogue. We firmly believe that on the background of complex geopolitical tensions in the world, the multinational cooperation platforms like this will, be, will help our countries to uncover new opportunities in the field of international trade and logistics. Uh, what we have in hand is called Trans-Caspian International Corridor. I think the speakers which took uh, talk uh, before me, they have mentioned important technical aspects of the uh, corridor, so I will not go to the details. I'll just give the different approach uh, to the corridor itself. Trans-Caspian International Corridor is uh, considered to be the shortcut between Asia and Europe, uh, having 6,500 kilometers and offering 14 days of transport uh, transit time and bypassing uh, Russia and Iran, which are considered to be relatively uh, insecure countries due to the current political situation. So what we are offering actually is safety, operational efficiency and competitiveness. But these are the economic aspects of the issue. Apart from the economic interests, I think the middle corridor is built on mutual support and cooperation. So middle corridor is not only the transit corridor, but also the platform of friendship, brotherhood, and solidarity. Since we realize the importance of the corridor, we should first look at the efforts each country has uh, realized for the facilitation of the processes through the corridor. On behalf of my country, I should say that Azerbaijan puts huge emphasis on this project. And this is merely reflected in the initiatives and numbers we have accomplished. With the leadership of our president, His Excellency Ilham Aliyev, great efforts have been dedicated to the progress at bilateral and multilateral level. Huge infrastructure projects have been realized. We, National Shipping Lines of Azerbaijan, which is called ASCO, is, is the largest maritime, owns mar largest maritime fleet in the Caspian Sea with 54 ships, 13 ferries, two Roro and two Ropax ships. Uh, we, recently, we have invested more than 1 billion to Baku Tbilisi Cars Project, which is expected uh, to bring huge support to the corridor with a capacity of 7 million tons per year. We have the, launched the seaport, the second phase of Baku seaport uh, expansion. And uh, also we're considering Baku Zangazur Zanga corridor, which also will be the part of the uh, corridor in the future. Recently, we have built two airports in Fizuli and Zangilan in the territories which got liberated from the uh, invasion. And there's one more airport which is considered to be rebuilt. So this, uh, thanks to these efforts, uh, I would say in 2022, we have 
we have had the increase in 61st, 63% increase in transit volume and reached to the volume of about 7.5 million tons. It could be 15, and with infrastructure upgrade, it will become 25 million tons. But in comparison with the entire volume, it's nothing. I would say this, if I'm not mistaken, the trade turnover between Japan and the European Union is about 60 billion euros per year. So uh, in this prospect, I think we have we still have lots of things to do. And uh, sorry. we are expanding our relationships with the European Union in order to establish strong relation, political relationships that they are based on mutual trust and support. Uh, this year in Davos, uh, our president has announced that we'll double the natural gas exports to European Union. Also, there's a Black Sea underwater electric cable project, uh, which is about to be inaugurated to carry Azerbaijani made wind and solar power to European Union. So geographical location got extra support from favorable relationships we got with both with Asia and Europe. But that's not the end of the story. Still a lot to go. So here we should see uh, the expansion of the transit capacity. But this transit capacity is not uh, cannot be achieved by uh, only one country. So if Azerbaijan achieves the transit capacity of 25 million tons, in Baku seaport, for example, and if Tikman Bashir can only offer 15, it means our uh, capacity is still 15. Same goes with the transit time. If in Baku we handle it for 20 hours, but in Aktau it's 10 hours, so it means we are still lagging behind of our commitment. So there, there is very important Japanese saying here, I think Chowa, which says harmony, uh, if I'm not wrong, yeah. Harmony is very important to achieve throughout the corridor to make sure that we are all on the same page. Uh, and another important issue related to the middle corridor, of course, is the digitalization of the corridor. It's like simplification of uh, the processes. It entails simplification of border crossing procedures, implementing a single electronic transit customs document along the middle corridor, introducing and adapting the application of international mechanisms of transit facilitation, such as E-tier, ECMR, ESMGS, and et cetera. But all of this requires common digital platform to ensure reliable and secure information exchange. And here comes the challenge, how to find a common ground to serve to priorities and expectations of all stakeholders. So there are like further issues here, like product ownership, transfers of risks, unification of standards, and et cetera. And in this direction also, we are making some multilateral efforts to facilitate the process. Uh, today, we have a global symposium in Baku uh, with the participation of WCO Secretary General, Mr. Kuniomi Korea, I think. Yeah, I, as we see, Japan is somehow becoming a leading facilitator in the process. And at the same time, we, we have received uh, recommendations from UN Economic Council, uh, where they drafted uh, a document for intelligent transport systems, which includes e tour ECMR, ECMGS, and etc. So, as a, as our side, we have adopted the legal firm framework for application of ECMR and several agreements with other partners uh, to apply the same. But these actions are relatively fragmented. So we should come up with a single unified platform, which is equally accessible, reliable, and useful, informative for all the users. So there are further issues like cybersecurity, integration, centralized dispatcher and operating system, a single platform, ownership, international recognition, and et cetera. So there are a couple of options in, uh, available in the world, but we are still considering the options. I hope today's symposium in Baku, they, they will come up with a solution uh, towards this direction. I, and at the end, answering the, to Mr. Cross's uh, concerns that what is, what are the challenges and how we, uh, 
what we think to overcome those challenges. I think major challenges we face are related to the modernization of the infrastructure, both in Baku seaport and our railway system, and offering digitalization solutions, and uh, investing in AFES, we call Alat Free Economic Zone, which offers favorable conditions for all the international investments. So uh, I finish, I would like to finish my uh, speech with this statement. We are welcome, we are uh, all the Japanese investors uh, to consider all these three directions to cooperate with Azerbaijani government for future facilitation of the middle corridor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, from Turkmenistan, Mr. Akakamuradov, Iklim, uh, from the head of Department of Customs Statistics, State Customer Service, Turkmenistan. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to all the participants. On behalf of the, the Custom Service of Turkmenistan, I would like to extend my greetings. So in terms of digitalization, it is definitely a priority in order for us to address the systemic issue of the country. So at the national level, we do have a number of concepts been adopted. First of all, up until 2025, the digital economy development concept, and also from 2021 to 2025, the five-year digital economy development program. Those are the two been adopted across uh, different sectors and also different uh, operation. This is a roadmap for technological transformation. So the custom service in Turkmenistan, likewise with other sector, we are actively promoting digital transformation. For instance, 2020 onwards in the Turkmenistan customer service, in line with the international standard and best practice, uh, we have introduced the automated data processing system, ASICUDA World. This system, uh, the objective is to provide advantageous uh, conditions to the trade society to promote export and to enhance the, uh, the potential of transit po uh, potential for the Turkmenistan. And by enhancing the, uh, the evaluation, we would like to support the uh, the integrated initiative with the regional infrastructure. So TIR Connet has been uh, leveraged in, in the, uh, the Customs Convention on the International Transport of Goods Undercover. Uh, the State Customs Service of Turkmenistan in cooperation with the IRU has introduced the TIREPD system, which provides online preliminary information on goods and vehicles that are sent to Turkmenistan and transited through the territory of our country. So in terms of the digitalization of customs service, that we have introduced a single window software at the road custom checkpoints of the state border. This has brought us a very significant contribution and achievement. This single window system development, the State Customs Service of Turkmenistan, together with the UN Conference on Trade and Development and the UN Development Program, started the implementation of the, the single window for export-import operation project in Turkmenistan in 2021. So the Customs Service in Turkmenistan has been designated as the authorized body to coordinate the work of the system. Now in Turkmenistan, in 2021, we became a member of three international customs convention. So first, at the International Convention on the Simplification and Harmonization of Custom uh, Procedures, which is seen as a revised Kyoto Convention, entered into force for Turkmenistan and also the laws on accession to the, the Customs Convention on Containers and on accession to the Convention of the Custom Regime applicable in containers transferred to the pool and used for international transportation. This is a concrete step of our country to create favorable conditions to ensure the efficient movement of goods across national borders. 
So by using the TIR Connets, Customs Convention on the International Transfer of Goods Under Cover of TIR Canals, 1975 was the year that it was adopted. According to Annex 11, there are plans to connect an automated system for processing custom data to the international system ETIR, which will allow paperless and contactless operation to cross the custom border of Turkmenistan. The state customer service has international agreements on exchange of preliminary custom data on goods and vehicles crossing the customs border with customs administration of neighboring countries. The exchange of preliminary custom data is very important for simplifying customs procedures and accelerating the transportation of goods and vehicles across the customs border, as well as the developing transit corridors passing through our country. In order to develop transit corridors passing through the country, the State Customs Service conducts consistent work on further digitalization of custom procedures in order to increase the competitiveness of transit corridors and attract additional transit cargo flows. Measures are taken to further simplify the customs control mechanism and speed up customs, uh, speed up customs clearance. The exchange of lists of goods prohibited and restricted for movements across the customer border is carried out with the customs administrations of foreign countries. Also, there is also an exchange of experience in modernizing customs administration, developing the infrastructure, dry ports, and transit parks for TIR. All this is aimed to ensure that the route through Turkmenistan remains attractive and convenient for cargo transportation. Now I'd like to move on to the next topic, which relates to development of transport system in our country and measures aimed at forming new transport and communication networks. Today, under the leadership of President Aserda Abeldi Mohadimip, we are successfully implementing comprehensive national programs aimed at radical modernization of the material and technical basis of the transport industry, expansion of existing and certain, and a creation of new transport and communication networks. All these measures are designed to promote the active integration of the national transport system into the international communication infrastructure. Creation of large logistic centers and given its favorable geographical location to ensure regional coordination of multimodal transport. All this meets the, the fundamental interests of all countries and peoples and serves the goals of common well being, prosperity, and progress. Government of Turkmenistan has made important progress particularly in developing transit transport infrastructure, such as road, rail, and air front infrastructure, and promoting faster transit, including advances in sustainable energy, investment, promotion, and diversification. Turkmenistan has also initiated key resolutions on sustainable transport, namely, the role of transport and transit quarters in ensuring international cooperation for sustainable development. The resolution 69-213 of December 19, 2014. Also, resolution 70-197 of December 22, 2015, toward full cooperation among all modes of transport for the development of sustainable multimodal transit quarters and also Resolution 72-212 of December 20th, 2017, strengthening linkages among all modes of transport to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Turkmenistan also initiated Resolution 75-313 strengthening linkages among all modes of transport to ensure stable and reliable international transport for sustainable development during and after pandemic 
uh, COVID-19, which was adopted in July 2021 and aims to uh, intensify efforts to improve the sustainability of uh, emergency transportation, including mobilizing sufficient financial resources to increase the resilience of transportation system to effectively respond to COVID-19. Also, see the initiative of Turkey Ministan as of August of 2022, the International Conference of Ministers of Transport of Landlocked Developing Countries under the auspices of the United Nations. There's delegations from 40 countries. The objective of this forum were to share knowledge, experience, and innovative solutions for financing infrastructure in the post-pandemic period, ensuring the sustainability and stability, identifying recommendations and opportunities for improving the maintenance of transport infrastructure in landlocked countries, expanding international support for transport and strengthening cooperation in this area. During this forum, our president said that Berdi Mukhamov had uh, made a comment, and I would like to quote him. Turkey minister is convinced the transport architecture of the 21st century is the architecture of an integration breakthrough, connecting spaces, regions, industrial, resource, human potentials. The future is in a combined system of transport communication with access to major international and regional sea, river, road, rail, and air hubs, their optimal combination and use of advantages of each of them. As you know, our country initiated the first global conference on sustainable transport held in Ashgabat in November 2016. Turkey also initiated key UN General Assembly resolution on sustainable transport and the development of international cooperation in transport adopted in 2014, 2050, 2017, and 2021. I would like to emphasize that Turkey Minister is positively addressing issues related to the expansion of international cooperation and the formation of modern transport and logistic infrastructure. As example, such undertaking is a new international seaport in the city of Turkey Membashi, which was commissioned in May 2018. <coughs> it serves as a major international corridor in the region. Thanks to the high level of equipment of this facility, we have excellent conditions for multimodal logistics deliveries of goods from Europe to the Middle East and the Indian Ocean countries. The port is located on an area of more than 146 hectares. Its throughput capacity is 17 million tons of cargo a year. These are some of the features of the, the new international seaport. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Now, moving on to the Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to uh, speak at the 12th Tokyo Dialogue. And uh, I would like to talk about the Yumeshima Container Terminal uh, demonstration test. So this demonstration test, as you see in the uh, uh, title, uh, this is the uh, uh, consignment from the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communication. Uh, this is the port operation uh, based on the uh, uh, local 5G. So uh, you have English version.
So uh, uh, there is no mentioning about this, but uh, uh, there are three um, features of the local 5G. One is that uh, video and uh, static uh, images, that large volume can be uh, transmitted at a high speed. Second is that the, uh, the delay uh, is uh, minimal. And the third is that you can transport the uh, data uh, to the uh, uh, various uh, device at the same time. So uh, simultaneous access and connection is possible. So the uh, field uh, of the uh, demonstration is Osaka Yumeshima terminals. And uh, in the Bay Area of Osaka City, there is the uh, uh, place called Yumeshima, uh, 390 hectare uh, artificial island. And uh, 2025, the uh, uh, expo will be held on this island, and uh, it is drawing much attention from the stakeholders. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about the uh, overall alliance, um, including NTT uh, West. We have seven different members and sharing the responsibilities. So this is the outline of the demonstration. So. Um, uh, what is the background of this uh, demonstration test? And, and there are some challenges. As for the uh, background, the globalization of the supply chain made the uh, importance of the ports operation. Along with that, the Atayomeshima Island, the large scale container started coming in to uh, port visit and the cargo handling uh, takes more time and also around the gate of the uh, container terminals that uh, large trucks has uh, uh, suffered from the congestion and also the uh, people who are working in the ports uh, the average age is becoming um, higher and uh, we don't see uh, much of the younger generation working for the uh, port operation so uh, in this uh, demonstration test, the, by, with the use of the local 5G, we try to solve the problems. Um, I'd like to talk about it in the next page. Uh, at the end of this slide, that, that we have the uh, demonstration test, and as for the Yumeshima container terminals, um, we have a lot of uh, blockage, and also the uh, sea surface also give a negative impact to the communication. So there are three main points. Number one is the um, quality improvement of the business network in container terminals. So uh, the wireless device and then Wi-Fi device communications uh, have to be replaced by local 5G so that the network operation is going to be simplified and more efficient. And uh, local 5G uh, can send the massive amount of uh, data. A wearable terminals can take picture and uh, high uh, volume data uh, can be transferred. And with the use of the data that uh, port operation uh, can receive the digital transformation. Number two is the uh, real-time transmission of the container planning data to streamline storage process operations. So uh, it has been done uh, based on the paper. The instruction have to be sent by local 5G. So if there are any changes, then the user can receive the changes real-time. And it's done so simultaneously, so you can reduce the uh, number of the papers used and also improve the safety of the operators. And also the process of the operation can be streamlined. Last one, a trailer waiting area, um, alleviation of the congestion by visualizing it. So the traders going into the container terminals the number plates is taken as a photos and uh, local 5G uh, can send the number plate information to the uh, uh, 
the confirmation uh, system and uh, with this um, the ai can uh, forecast the congestion situation and the waiting time can be shortened uh, and also the portal site can show the uh, waiting time to the uh, truck driver so that uh, it's um, solicit the uh, truck drivers to change their behaviors and uh, with this the uh, local 5g um, technology can be utilized to uh, enhance the uh, um, operation of the uh, ports and the container yard and we're doing it by the end of march and uh, report to you the result of this for the future through the demonstration we gain the knowledge so digital transformation of the port operation and the improvement of the productivity and also the smart port operation uh, we are planning to accelerate the uh, our work towards that goal so that's it from us thank you very much for your attention thank you very much I'd like to hear from the World Customs Organization. Mr. Yasui Tadashi, the head of external relations from WCO, and Mr. Motohiro Fujimitsu, manager of WCO JICA Joint Project Capacity Buildings Directorate. Thank you very much. So my name is Yasui from WCO World Customers Organization. It is indeed an honor to be able to share the activities of WCO. Thank you very much for the opportunity. So for my end, I'd like to introduce the overview of WCO and also share with you the, the concrete activities that we are doing in Central Asia and how it could be applied to the, uh, uh, the five countries in Central Asia and Caucasus. So, um, could you start the, uh, the slide? So first of all, the WCO, World Customers Organization, is an international organization, the only one uh, specifically on customs, was established in 1950, 1952. Last year, we marked the, the 70th anniversary. This year's 71st anniversary. The headquarters in Brussels, in Belgium. We have 185 members. Almost all the, the countries in the world are members. So it's pretty much equivalent to the, the members of United Nations. So the five countries and the Caucasus region, all of you are members of WCO. So from that point, it is indeed a very global uh, organization. The Secretary General of WCO as introduced already, the Japanese national, Dr. Kunio Mikuria. So he, as a Japanese national, heads the, uh, the organization. The three core functions for WCO. First, the development of global standards. So, for instance, Kyoto Protocol or the HS, a goods classification. So, these are some of the global standards and also simplification of customs clearance or a standardized the customs procedures. So, there was an example of the containers. So, indeed, we are involved in the development of such global standards. Second is to promote the customs uh, cooperation. So that is cooperation, the re inter-regional basis, and also on the global basis. We like to promote various forms of cooperation. That's the second objective. And the third function, uh, every year, uh, this has become gaining in its Im importance, that is capacity building activities. So that is assistance, a technical assistance to the developing countries. And it will be conducted on an integrated <coughs> basis. So vis-a-vis -vis this one single global standard, all the countries will be engaged in this, addressing this in the same way. And by doing so, we can enhance the predictability and the transparency. So uh, indeed, the importance of capacity buildings is uh, uh, certainly getting traction. Next slide, please. So I'd like to specifically focus on the, uh, the transit. So uh, 
So we've heard about this uh, customs transit a lot. So we'd like to share what exactly is this custom transit? So we've been hearing about the Central Asia and the uh, Caucasus. This is the map of the region. So the transportation along the corridor is mainly a series of custom transit by rail. So for instance, from East Asia, once it goes through the Kazakhstan all the way to Europe, so you would not have to go through the customs clearance in Kazakhstan. So that is why it is called custom transit. So once uh, the Kazakhstan, the, the cargo enters and uh, the bonded transport, when cargo from East Asia is uh, transported from Kazakhstan, there's no need to pay customs and uh, it would need to identify what are the, the content of the items. And once the, uh, the cargo leaves the Kazakhstan, uh, we would need to approve whether the cargo entry the territory for bonded carriage, it is the same as it exits. So that is the uh, the definition for the customs transit. Could we move on to the next slide, please? This is a development of the, uh, the rail uh, custom transit procedure. So on the top is the, the typical uh, example. So from country A, uh, we would need the uh, the rail transit procedures. So we'll, this will be submitted in the paper format. So after going through inspection and confirmation, and it is approved, then the rail uh, the the railway will start. Now at the border of uh, country B, it's at the station, there's also a custom officials to make sure that there has been no change in the the cargo content. So, of course, it is in a paper format in terms of the declaration, so that will be used for confirmation. So now the uh, the train leaves for country B. So at the station, there's also the custom official. And also there will be another operator uh, to submit the, uh, the declaration form to the custom. And that would go all the way to country C. So this is the traditional of uh, the transit procedure. Now, moving on to the second row of this uh, slide, this is when the, the transit uh, declaration is uh, digitalized, what will become of it. And also at the same time, at the, the custom system, uh, the interoperable, basically the interoperability is in short. So uh, at the time of departure from uh, the country A on electronic basis, uh, there will be an e-transit declaration be submitted. And that information, it will be uh, shared uh, with the uh, the customs officials uh, to the uh, the officials at the, the border B uh, prior to the arrival of the the, the rail, uh, the, the trains. So prior to the arrival of the trains, uh, they, uh, the customs official can engage in the, in the inspection. So we could do risk management, and if there's nothing suspicious, then uh, the rail could actually pass through. Uh, this would definitely expedite the whole procedure. So today there's been a number of time mentioned about the electronic digitalized uh, the, the transit declaration. I believe that has been realized in the, the number of countries already. So in the very bottom, uh, the row or flow here, it's for further uh, facilitation of this uh, process. It's called one-stop service. On the bottom left, so at the uh, the country B, we can tell the we have uh, two officials wearing the uniforms. So uh, the country A and country B at the same time at the same venue jointly they can engage in the inspection to extend the one-stop service so when the uh, uh the rolling stock the cargo rail so they would not need to stop uh, when they were to leave uh the the country a so this would further facilitate the process uh, these are more details, but because of the time constraint, I am going to skip this. Uh, could we move on to the next slide? I'm going to, going to skip this, this one too. Thank you very much.
So on this slide, first of all, um, I would like to explain about the uh, how or what we are doing uh, to work on this uh, uh, this uh, uh, acceleration of the uh, railroad. And uh, we held the uh, WCO Global Rail Workshop in 2020. So I would like to give you the uh, uh, result of that. There are two camps. One is OSJT, mainly Eastern Europe, and the ODIF is mainly the Western uh, Europe. So in case of OSJT, that uh, they are using FMZS. And OTIF use CIM for the railroad cargo. The purple area is uh, SMGS um, area, and the green is a CIM area. The yellow uh, can accept both of them. So WCO is working on the ODIF, OSJD. We have a cooperative MOU. Uh, Turkmenistan uh, mentioned about the uh, revised uh, Kyoto uh, Convention. And uh, this is the uh, uh, WCO's revised Kyoto Protocol and uh, uh, Transportation Declaration. Uh, as long as it um, fills the requirement of the uh, custom, it can be treated as the uh, bonded transport declarations so that uh, they don't have to uh, submit another uh, declaration. And Middle Corridor, Caspi uh, Caspian Sea Route, uh, they receive CIM or SMGS. Now, this is about the uh, transportation uh, certificate, CIT, the International Rail Transport Committee. Uh, is the committee overseeing the railroad transportation, and uh, they uh, have uh, uh, the integrated format for the CIM and SMGC. And the electronic version is called the ECIM slash SMGC, which was already created in 2019. But as of summer last year, that uh, there was no pilot um, test conducted. The people who have been using the CIM use XML. And OSJD, the SMGS people use EDIFACT. So that they need to have a converter to exchange information. ECIM SMGS, how long does it take? Um, according to the CIT presentation, it takes 40 minutes per wagon. So eight to 10 hours per one train. So at WCO, based on these studies, last year summer, uh, we produced the WCO railway guidance. the electronic custom transit uh, declaration and also the uh, training for the uh, custom officers who are uh, specified in these uh, guidelines. Other than WCO, uh, there are some uh, uh, developments. So ODIF, OSJD, CIT, and also TRISECA, which has been uh, repeatedly mentioned by the participants. And uh, our was a summary statement of a Ministry of Transport Conference of landlocked developing countries, UNOHRLLS, 
This is the office of the high representative of the least developed countries, landlocked developing countries, and small island developing states. And every year they hold the ministerial meetings. And the ICT connectivity is a crucial for the uh, uh, transport and the transit system of the LDCT, LDC. And next, at the Turk Council, the uh, uh, Samarkand Declaration, uh, which was uh, produced in November 2022, and then they said, prioritize increasing investment for ensuring intra-regional connectivity with well-developed and interconnected hard and soft transport infrastructure projects. And uh, Azerbaijan uh, representative mentioned about this at Baku, the uh, custom heads meeting on project for simplifying transit customs procedure along the Trans-Caspian International East-West Middle Corridor using single window principle is being held. And the head of the uh, regional uh, custom offices are there, and uh, our uh, head Mikuria is also being present. So I think it is very timely. Uh, this is WCO capacity building and uh, technical assistance uh, operations. WCO JICA joint project. I am a manager uh, of the WCO. Uh, we are uh, implementing this project in Africa and also the Pacific Island. Sasaki san of the MOFA uh, has also uh, mentioned about the master trainer program and also risk management uh, analysis. The transit information uh, should be uh, uh, well um, studied uh, by the officers, and then that type of trainings are provided. And the one stop border posts are doing with JICA. And uh, uh, SIDA, the Swedish uh, entity, also invested into this trade facilitation and custom modernization program. And uh, this is for Africa and the interoperability of customs IT system, single windows. Uh, also worked in this uh, program. So uh, WCO is involved in uh, many different uh, programs. Lastly, uh, this is the uh, mission of the WCO, Borders Divide, Customs Connect. That's it. Thank you so much. Next, we'd like to hear about the benefits of digitalization from Japanese companies. So we'd like to call upon Mr. Osamu Yamaguchi, Senior はい, Consultant, Research and Consulting from NX Logistic Research Institute in Consulting. Thank you very much for the introduction. My name is Yamaguchi uh, from NX Logistic Research. I do not have any slides, so I'd like to verbally present to you. So uh, NX Research Institute. So Nippon Express a subsidiary. It was a research institute as part of the Nippon Express. Normally as part of Annex Group. And uh, the middle corridor, which has been repeatedly mentioned today. So this sort of a new route, uh, we are engaging in research of these new routes. That is the, uh, uh, the the nature of our business, but I know we're running out of time. So just a couple minutes I'd like to uh, comment on our activities. So first of all, uh, from Japan to Europe, by uh, using the middle corridor uh, to transport the containers. If you were to consider that we as the forwarder, as a nishin, uh, the, uh, the uh, the representative from Nishin mentioned the fact that we have to do uh, multiple border crossing and uh, under a bonded status. So uh, uh, it will be transited on a bonded basis. So it would go through Caspian Sea. There would be a marine transportation. It may actually go through rail. So for instance, uh, the gauge of the, the train may be different from Georgia and Turkey. Uh, the gauge may be different and also from China and Kazakhstan because of the, the rail gauge. Uh, the transshipment needs to be conducted. So the cargo need to be uh, changed in terms of 
So uh, in terms of transshipment, what sort of a quality, what sort of infrastructure is available? Those are uh, some of the major concerns uh, for the data shipping companies. Also, in terms of the procedures, as mentioned already, SMGS and CIM, these are the two different types of uh, uh, the forms that have been used for the, uh, the custom transit. So how smoothly uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, clear this? That is the point we need to consider. For instance, with the use of digitalization, how much of a time can we shorten? These are definitely one of the, uh, the major concerns that we have as the operator, especially for the inter international rail. If you were to smoothly operate this uh, to conduct trade, digitalization may not be suffice, only may not be suffice. In fact, we need to have uh, international collaboration in terms of the information uh, that may be necessary. As mentioned already at uh, country A, which is uh, where uh, the departure country, at what time is the rail uh, departing? And at what time uh, would it actually arrive at the station at the border? This sort of information needs to be shared and also some of the uh, uh, information related to the cargo. So by having this information at the specific station at the, the border, they can actually prepare for the next procedure. And by conducting these uh, preparation, it would, smooth, it would enable smooth uh, the transshipment as well as the various procedures that follow. So these sort of uh, linkage in terms of information that is just as important as digitalization. Also another point, we do perceive this as uh, the issues. So CIM and SMGS, CIM and SMGS, uh, these are a different uh, mechanism for the, the custom uh, transit. So in terms of the, the scope of the guarantee and also some of the terms and contracts of the, of the contract is different. So how uh, would we follow on these and monitor these? That is another important uh, factor as uh, an operator who is engaged in a day-to-day -day business. Also in terms of language, CIM is in French, Germany, English in terms of uh, the documentation, whereas the SMGS is Russian and Chinese. That is the, the standard language employed. So in terms of the actual interaction, of course, the actual methodology differ, but also the difference in the language is uh, another factor that we need to consider. So it is fairly challenging to standardize. Uh, that is uh, what we have heard. So TSR, uh, the, the, through the Siberia at the border, uh, I believe that it has not been fully penetrated in the day-to-day -day business. And I, I know that as well. But by no means I'm, I am becoming pessimistic. In fact, we are seeing gradual penetration. So in the Central Asia, uh, in terms of the, the transit route, gradually we shall see advancement of this. And uh, there will be uh, information linkage amongst uh, multiple countries. By doing so, I do believe the, the route will be much easier to uh, use. So as far as the Japanese operators are concerned, as we heard from Nishin already, definitely it is gaining uh, much attention recently. So I know you may criticize me, we don't have much time, but I, I still like to share this little anecdote. So uh, when, uh, when I was coming to this venue, The, I saw this commercial on the, uh, uh, the, the paperless operation of these documentation. So by conducting digitalization, we can also address this language issue because there is an automatic translation. And the, the Japanese uh, companies, quite often they're familiar with uh, procedures in English, but when it becomes Russian, French, or German, all of a sudden, uh, uh, they uh, start to uh, make mistakes. And of course, uh, when, and that would actually be much more time consuming in terms of the customs clearance. So from that perspective, digitalization may also be a very effective uh, tool uh, to address this language issue. 
And we do believe Japan has the technology uh, to contribute. So we heard from NTT uh, West as well. But aside from them, we do have uh, quite an, a wide range of technology that we can offer from Japan. So I would like to solicit all of you uh, to that, um, that we would like to be of help uh, to your region. So I ask for your cooperation. Apology, I, I sort of went all directions, but that is all uh, from my end. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's move on to the Q&A session. I hope that uh, you will give a succinct answer. First of all, Mr. Aliyev from Azerbaijan. The, uh, in your presentation, uh, you mentioned about the uh, the uh, framework for the multilateral cooperation through digitalization is being developed. So um, for the implementation of this, what is the biggest challenge for you? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chiba, for the question. Uh, this is an important question that also uh, makes us to think of uh, for quite a long time because uh, each country and each stakeholder in this process and which participates in the middle corridor, they have different priorities and different expectations. That is the first uh, challenge for us. And second, uh, as uh, Mr. Fuimitsu also mentioned in his presentation, uh, there are different standards and documentation. If you are going, if we are talking about the railway, for example, these, some countries are going CIM, some countries are going SMGS. So it's really hard to bring all of them to this unified and single platform where both of them are interchangeable and acceptable. So uh, also we are all like evaluating the different options which are offering the pl the different platforms. So these are two major questions we are trying to discuss with our partners in the multilateral level to see what could be a common ground to find a solution for these processes and use a single like a single platform to uh, bring all the documents, all the processes and work together with our partners and stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Now I'd like to ask Mr. Kakamurdov from Turkmenistan. So within your presentation, you mentioned about the uh, the holistic integrated program for the uh, modernization of the, the system. So in Turkmenistan, in order to smoothly uh, the link the, uh, the Caspian Sea transport and the rail transport, what are some of the measures that you are taking? Thank you very much for the question. So Turkmenistan, it is the international port. So ferries, cargo, and also uh, we have uh, for the, the travelers, other people. And also we have 17 vessels could be processed. So in terms of the rail uh, terminal, it is uh, located on the southeast of the uh, the uh, the terminal and the necessary advanced technology it's all facilitated within uh, this terminal at this terminal there are two ocean vessel uh, cargo could be processed so for instance um, the, the transshipment of the, the cargo for instance or platform that could be conducted so the the volume that could be transacted it's quite large so the automobile uh, cars are used, and it is uh, working uh, the, the 24 hours a day. Thank you very much. Uh, this concludes the panel discussion to digitalization in trade and customs. Thank you very much for the participants. <laughs> Well, thank you very much once again for your participation. And I think we had a very uh, meaningful um, exchange of opinions have been done. So that uh, I hope that uh, uh, today's discussion is going to be contributing to the connectivity with the Central Asia and also Caucasus, Caucasus with Japan. The people who are here, uh, 
We will be having a reception party in Hawaii, so、uh, please、uh, stay a little bit more and enjoy networking with other participants. And thank you very much for your、uh, work, translators. It's adjourned. The、uh, 12th Tokyo Dialogue of the Central Asia plus Japan Dialogue Connectivity with Central Asia and Caucasus. Thank you very much.